My name is Kyler Blazing, and I'm going to tell you all about the problems in Egypt's government and how they treat their citizens. Mohamed Bakri, Hani Amer, Mohamed Afifi, Abd al Rahman Saeed, Khaled Fard, Islam Saeed, and Ashraf al Garabli are six Egyptian men who have been sentenced to death by the Egyptian Supreme Court. This sentence was decided based on the fact that the six men had confessed to attacking soldiers of the Egyptian army while they were being tortured by the government. This is an example of how the Egyptian government conducts their trials and a guideline for how the Egyptian government conducts everything regarding to the rights of their citizens. The biggest issue in the Egyptian government is that they do not care about the protecting the rights of their citizens because they only care about the safety and security of their government. In short, to the government, the government staying in power is more important than the happiness of their citizens. Another issue in Egypt is that basic human decency doesn't seem to have any influence in the decisions of the government. For example, there have been many instances in which Egypt uses torture to get what they want, like what happened to the six Egyptian men who were sentenced to death. The rights that are being violated in Egypt are the freedom of expression and excessive force by Egyptian police and their superiors. This right, freedom of expression, is obviously very important, as it is part of our First Amendment, and it has a lot of importance to the Egyptian citizens. However, the government doesn't think this right is worth much because they ignore it when the government makes decisions. In my opinion, the condition of human rights has improved a lot over the world in the last 50 years, but Egypt has not followed this pattern. Egypt has never treated their citizens amazingly in the past, but they've never treated them as poorly as they do today. As I said earlier, the government cares more about themselves than their citizens, so they will not allow themselves to have their rights violated. The only people in Egypt that are being affected by the violation of this right are Egyptian citizens. In 2014, there were more death sentences than they've ever had in a year. In 2014, there were more death sentences than they've ever had in a year. On February 2nd of this year, there were 183 citizens who received the death sentence solely for the cases on that day. There also was a peaceful protest this year at Cardassa Police Station that the police turned into a violent protest. 11 officers were killed and around 1,000 protesters were killed by the police forces. There were four trials in response to the protest and there were 488 citizens sentenced to death and there have been no punishments in response to the officers for killing a thousand citizens. There has been a long record of the Egyptian government treating their citizens poorly, and the condition has continued to worsen over time. For a long time, the Egyptian police and their secret police has been known to torture their citizens when interrogating them for information. For example, in 1996, an Egyptian woman named Amal and her husband Ahmad al Sayed were arrested by the Egyptian police. Amal said in an interview that the police asked her to admit that her husband was a lunatic and a wife beater. When she said no, the police turned violent and hung her by her hands from the ceiling, and they made fun of her and beat her. Also, each of the officers kept telling her how much fun it would be to rape her. So, in this situation, two innocent people were arrested and tortured for a woman to say that her husband beat her. A normal police force, if they were actually worried about the safety of this woman, would ask her in private if she's being treated poorly by her husband, and they should trust her answer. However, the Egyptian police asked her nicely, and when they didn't get the answer they wanted, they tortured her and her husband. The things that happened to a mall should never happen to anyone, but it definitely should not be caused by their police. The definition of the word police is the civil force of a national or local government responsible for the prevention and detection of crime and the maintenance of public order. Is torturing and killing your citizens a good way to maintain order in a country? Is turning peaceful protests into violent protests a good way to maintain order in your country? No. The police are in charge of keeping the citizens safe. And the actions that were acted on to Amal should never happen to anyone, but especially not by the people that are in charge of keeping her and everyone else safe. Events that are alike to what happened to Amal and Ahmad al Said have happened in Egypt multiple times. There have been many instances in which a police or government do not give their citizens a fair trial or any way for them to prove their innocence. Instead, they use torture to get information quicker, and whether it is true or false doesn't matter, as long as they can get a confession. The police uses excessive lethal force and torture to get what they want from their citizens. This puts a lot of fear into citizens, knowing that the people in charge of their security put them in danger for the government's convenience. The government has tried many things to keep their citizens happy by changing their form of government to keeping the country under control. 
The big problem was that even if the Egyptians were able to fix one part of the government, the others would still be corrupt. For all of Egypt's existence, Egyptian citizens have not been able to vote for their president. However, in 2013, Egypt changed this and held its first free election for their president. Mohamed Morsi was elected in 2013, and everyone was happy because they got the person they wanted to be their president. So, Egypt finally cleaned up their election system, but the military system still needed some fixing. The army overtook the government and they elected Abdel Fattah al-Sisi as their new president. They also sentenced a former president, Mohamed Morsi, to death. The Egyptian police has also tried to calm down their citizens in the past, but the police isn't very good at solving issues peacefully. For example, in August of 2013, there were many people in Egypt who wanted to leave the country. However, the police wouldn't let them leave, so they protested. The police then used excessive lethal force to kill hundreds of innocent citizens, and once again, citizens were charged with crimes and police members were not. Another thing that could fix this issue is the Egyptian government. They are fixing themselves one piece at a time, but they need to put it all together really soon. Since 1948, the human right of freedom of speech has changed a lot in Egypt. The human rights of Egyptian citizens have never been respected very much, but it is worse today than it has ever been before. The citizens haven't had a voice in what happens regarding their government. The thing that makes it worse today is that they cannot even try to have a voice. The excessive, the excessive lethal force and torture issued by the police force completely restricts the effort to have a voice. In the past, Egyptian citizens have been disappointed in their government, but now they are scared of their government. The real problem in Egypt is the police force. Egypt has made attempts to expand the freedom of speech, but they haven't made attempts to stop the torture by their police force. So, until Egypt disciplines their government officers that mistreat their citizens, Egypt will always have a problem. In other countries, a way to expand their citizens' freedom of speech is by allowing them to protest peacefully and elect their own government officials. Egypt has tried both of these things, and the freedom of speech right has been expanded among its citizens. So now they need to do what other countries do, give their police officers proper training. If they train their officers and tell them what they can and cannot do, then the way police officers work will change. I think that one thing that Egypt can do to change their fate as a chaotic country is to change its form of government to a democracy. Yes, the freedom of speech isn't the biggest issue here compared to the killings of the Egyptian police, but the more confidence the citizens get, the less scared they will be to stand up for those rights. Democracies work well in the world, and it would make a big difference in making Egypt a safer country. Another thing that Egypt should do is to create a more organized police institution. Not everyone should be able to become a police officer. Only people who are smart and understanding and people who we can entrust to keep us safe. The police officers in Egypt today are not keeping their citizens safe, as they are only putting them in more danger. In general, Egypt needs to be safer with who they place in high positions in their government. For example, the head of police is not a great guy, and the head of the military formed a regime and took over the government. He then sentenced the president to death. However, when the people elected the president, they chose a, they chose a man who is at least trying to solve problems. The people that the government is choosing are just making problems. So Egypt needs to let the people elect their representatives because it makes everyone happier and it works better. Thank you for listening.